In this video, we're going over how to create a cinematic rain scene without real rain right inside of After Effects. Make sure to join our Patreon to get a ton of perks, including a private VFX masterminds chat where you can talk to other VFX artists. Link in the description below. All right, so the first thing we need to do is separate our subject from the clip into its own layer and create a layer with the sky removed. With our layer opened, we'll grab the rotor brush tool and begin rotoing out our subject. If you'd like to go a little more in depth on how to use the rotor brush tool, you can check out our rotor brush video in the top right hand corner. Now, once we've finished our roto, we'll go back to our original clip and this time create a rectangle mask from the top down to the horizon line to remove the sky. This will cut off the top of our subject, but all we need to do now is drag in our new roto layer and place it on top and then render out the clip with the sky removed. Next, we'll create a new comp that now has our new roto and sky removed layers. Drag in the clip of our new sky and place it underneath the sky removed layer. Then scale the clip up in position and add a curves effect to the sky removed layer to color match with the new sky clip by adding some contrast, boosting the blue channel, adding a touch of green and pulling back on the red just a bit. Once that's done, copy and paste the curves effect to the roto layer so that the two layers match. Then we'll duplicate the new sky layer and add a mask across the top third and apply a large amount of feathering, about 500 pixels. We want to use this to darken up the top portion of the sky, so we'll add another curves effect to the duplicated layer and adjust the levels until we have a desired darkness amount. Then lower the opacity down to around 50%. The next thing we need to do is add some thunderstorm clouds to the scene. All of the assets we're using in this video we got from Action VFX, which has a ton of great VFX assets that you can utilize in your projects. First we'll drag and drop in our storm cloud layer and place it between the sky removed layer and the new sky layers. Scale up until it fills the sky and then position. Set the blending mode to screen to remove the black and then copy and paste the curves effect from the sky removed layer to the storm cloud layer to color match with the sky. Then add a fast box blur effect with a low setting just to smooth the overlay better with the sky. Once that's all done, we're now ready to begin comping in our rain assets. The first one we'll add is a wide rain clip and we'll drop it above all the layers. Scale in position until it fills the frame, and then for this we'll flip it horizontally to match with the wind direction. Next we'll add another curves effect to adjust the highlights of the rain, and then drop the layer opacity down to around 20% or until it blends better with the shot, and then set the blending mode to screen. Then we'll drag in a closer rain asset to add some depth layering to the scene. Place the close rain asset at the top, flip horizontally, and set to screen. Scale the clip up dramatically so that the rain feels like it's closer to the camera lens. Then we'll add yet another curves effect to adjust the highlights and color tone, then add a camera lens blur effect to give the shot some depth of field and lower the layer opacity down to around 50%. Now in order to add a little bit to the realism, we need to have the rain interacting with the ground. So next we'll drag and drop in our ground rain asset and place it underneath the main rain layers and set the blending mode to screen. Add and adjust a curves effect the same way that we've done for all the other layers and then add a fast box blur effect with a subtle value. Then we'll add a mask around the layer with a good amount of feathering to get rid of that hard edge. Scale down in position and then adjust the mask shape to fit with the ground plane and lower the opacity until it blends. Then we'll drag in a different ground rain asset and repeat the process. Duplicate both ground clips in position all across the ground plane, adjusting the start and end points in the timeline to throw them out of sync, and then adjust the mask of each, as well as the opacity levels, flipping a few horizontally, and anything else that will add some random variation so that they don't all look the same. Then move any layer that should be behind the subject beneath the roto layer. To take the realism even one step further, we want to add a subtle touch of rain interaction with the umbrella. To do that, we'll open the original clip in a new comp and do some motion tracking on the umbrella and apply the tracking data to a null object. You can check out our video on motion tracking in the top right hand corner to go more in depth. Next we'll drop in one of our dripping water assets and add a mask around the top, setting the mask to subtract and adding some feathering. Then we'll set the blending mode to screen and parent it to the null. Scale the layer down and position along the edge of the umbrella and now the dripping water moves with the umbrella. Next we'll drag in another ground rain asset and repeat the same process for rain hitting the top of the umbrella, drawing a mask in the shape of the umbrella, adding feathering, setting to screen and parenting to the null. Then we'll select the two layers and the null and copy and paste over to our main comp, placing the layers right above the roto clip. And once again, we'll add a curves effect to blend color and highlights and add a fast box blur to each, then lower the opacity. Now, it wouldn't be a thunderstorm without some lightning, so next we'll drag and drop in one of our lightning assets above the sky layers. Scale in position where there is a flash from the storm cloud layer and add a small mask set to subtract with some feathering around the starting point of the lightning bolt so there isn't such a hard edge against the cloud. Add a curves effect and a fast blur like always. Then once we're happy with the timing and placement, 
adjustment. Pre-comp the lightning layer and add some glow. In this case, we're using the Red Giant Optical Glow plugin to get a nice glowing core with soft fall off around the bolt. Set the layer to screen and lower the opacity to taste. Then repeat the process for any other lightning bolts throughout the scene. Then finally, to tie it all together, we'll add a little bit of atmospheric haze. Create an adjustment layer and add an optical glow effect. Set the amount to a low number like five or six and then boost the size all the way up. Set the highlights only parameter to around 50% and fall off to 0%. This will create a nice overall haze. Then after adding some color grading, we have a cinematic rain shot from no real rain.